planets orbit the sun and moons orbit the planets in this particular way. This is experimentally determined by Kepler around 1600 and you have all, all the planets and moons will follow elliptical orbits with the sun or the planet at one focus. So wh why exactly does this happen? Newton theoretically determined the reason why with his law of universal gravitation and he around 1700 took his law of universal gravitation and theoretically determined this. He, he back checked this thing. So why exactly is that? What we're going to do today is take the gravitational force between, well, on the earth from the sun or on the moon from the earth and look at an elliptical orbit and see why it speeds up, why it slows down. We're, we're going to take a graphical vector component look at the reason why this is actually happening. It's kind of cool. Ellipses, how you can make them and how nature makes them too. Let's learn physics. This is all you need to do to make an ellipse. Take two little pins and wrap a little piece of string around it and do that. There you go, that's your ellipse. And now one of those foci, one focus, is the central object, gonna be the sun, gonna be the planet, and then something goes around it. Now I'm gonna draw that semi-major axis and then draw a line five centimeters long. This five centimeter long line represents the gravitational force, kind of like the weight at that particular position. I'm gonna use that as a standard. Now that thing is eight centimeters away, center to center, and then the other one's 12 centimeters away. So I can use that gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects and do a calculation. 1.5 squared and 5 divided by 1.5 squared gives you 2. Okay, so the gravitational force at that new position, 12 centimeters versus 8 centimeters, 1.5 times distance is 2.2 centimeters long, significantly shorter. Of course, I wrote it, at, I drew it at 1.2 centimeters, but whatever. Okay, here's some other points that I chose, random other points, and that is 8 centimeters versus... I don't know, what is that? 7.8, 7.8 over 8.5 centimeters. 0.917, square that, because it's an inverse square relationship. And that thing, rather than five centimeters at that position, there would be a 4.2 centimeter long line. Get another distance, it's like 10 and a half. Same ratio concept. Square it, inverse square relationship, multiply by five. So the new one, 2.9 centimeters long. There. As you see, it gets farther away, and the gravitational force line vector gets shorter. And here are the last two. Just take the ratio, inverse square relationship, draw the length of the line. It gets longer as you get closer, gets shorter as you get farther away. And note that this is not a circle, so those are not radial lines. Those lines can be split into gravitational force components parallel to and perpendicular to the velocity to cause a change in speed and a change in direction. But first, we need to draw tangent lines at each of those positions. Remember, a tangent line touches a curve at one point and does not cross it. These are approximate tangent lines. It's a pretty good sketch and it'll help us give a pretty good idea. And draw the proper forces in the proper direction and the proper magnitude. And now lines perpendicular to the velocity and perpendicular to those tangent lines using this tri-square. Now that we have dotted lines parallel to and perpendicular to the velocity of the object, we can now draw gravitational force components that are perpendicular to the motion. That is the centripetal force, the force, the net force that causes a change in direction. And except for the two positions along that semi-major axis, a portion, a part, a component of that gravitational force is causing the change in direction. It's the major component in all of these cases, but it is a component, a part nonetheless. Now there's the gravitational force, which is straight toward the center, and the gravitational force perpendicular component, which is the portion of the gravitational force that is causing a change in direction. It's smaller. And you can see that at the far right and at the far left, all of the gravitational force is changing direction. 
Weight is another term for gravitational force I've alternated, gravitational force F sub G or W all the way through, and then F sub G perpendicular or W perpendicular, a little bit smaller and not toward the sun. Now, FG parallel versus FG perpendicular. We've drawn the perpendicular already, that is the centripetal force. The other one is what I call the tangential net force. It's a tiny little thing. The other component, and I'm drawing it this way, because, well, it's easy, I can draw it that way. The parallel gravitational force, the tangential net force, the, the one that's parallel to the velocity is the, th is the force, the net force that is causing a change in speed. So that gravitational force, the changes as it goes around in this elliptical orbit, can be split into two components. One, the gravitational force perpendicular, causing a change in direction. And the other one, the gravitational force parallel, causing the change in speed, because this will speed up and slow down, and it will change direction. Now let's use a little ball as a satellite to show the difference between the tangential net force and the centripetal net force. Ain't no object going to change direction unless there is a force perpendicular to its velocity. And that is what the weight does in combination with changing its speed. So as it goes around in this elliptical orbit, the perpendicular component changes the direction. Centripetal force. Now we know that satellites travel faster as they get closer to the central object. And you can see that here because, oh, look at that, backwards net force, backwards net force, exclusively perpendicular forward net force, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, changing direction exclusively, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Take a look at that one point, the gravitational force parallel, that changes the speed, changes the speed a little bit bigger, no change in speed at that position. Changes the speed, slows it down, it's backwards, slows it down, no change in speed at that position. Then it starts speeding it up a little bit, speeding it up a little bit, speeding it up a little bit. And back to the original gravitational force. Starts right there, that's the point I started with. And then this splits into two components, slowing the thing down. And then two components again, slowing it down a little bit less. It's a smaller force, changing direction and slowing it down. And then here, exclusively changing direction. And then here, speeding it up a little bit and changing direction, speeding up a changing direction, speeding up changing direction, getting larger, gravitational force is larger as you get closer. And that is why an ellipse is formed in every one of the orbits that we see in nature. It's pretty cool and you can draw it. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.